president pushing back on claims of a slow response in Puerto Rico. We are sending tremendous amounts of supplies, tremendous amounts of food and water, and we are sending great people to help. I think that people are looking for good guys or bad guys. They're looking to place blame. Focus on helping people. That should be the focus of the media, of the public. We are with you, we will stay with you, and we will come back stronger than ever. Tom Price has resigned as President Trump's Health and Human Services Secretary. Price was under fire for his use of private flights for government and personal business. This is probably going to cause every cabinet official for the rest of the time that Donald Trump is in the White House to say, I better be really careful about this issue. President Trump and Republican lawmakers say they're now focusing on their tax plan. A giant, beautiful, massive, the biggest ever in our country, tax cut. And it will be rocket fuel for our economy. I actually have a lot of beautiful voice. Nice. You do. You do. She does. This song always just makes me feel good. I don't know why. That's why I was closing my eyes and just sort of groove into it. You're in a den. What a wonderful way to wake up. If you're joining us this morning, we didn't know that song was coming either. But what a <laughs> wonderful way to start. Well, it's good to be with both of you this morning. Yes. Likewise. We've Welcome. all had sort of a busy week, haven't we? A little bit. Interviewing yeah. the president, mm -hmm. out on the road, interviewing fans in, in Green Bay. That was awesome. Yeah. I mean, look, I don't care what football team you root for. When you get to go to Lambeau Field, that is an awesome assignment. The people in Green Bay are just salt of the earth, and, and we had a great time. Thank you for your hospitality, and obviously we got the pulse of the people. Uh, gosh, I, I don't think we had one person who said, I agree with kneeling. And, and look, we asked as many people as we could, black, white, all races. Everybody said the same thing. Hand over the heart. We're going to get to that, a obviously, lot of throughout the course there, of the morning. But yeah, a lot of news uh, coming yes. in this morning, breaking last night. Breaking last night, indeed. Tom Price is out as Health and Human Services Secretary. Price resigning on Friday following the widespread criticism of his private plane trips, becoming the first Trump cabinet secretary to leave that administration. Ellison Barber joins us live from D.C. with all the details. Ellison, good morning. Good morning to all of you. After days of public scrutiny, apologies, and a promise to pay back at least some of the money he used from taxpayers to fly in private jets, HHS Secretary Tom Price is, as you said, the first cabinet secretary to resign in the Trump administration. As of midnight, this man, Don J. Wright, is in charge of the department. He's the acting secretary now before he served as the deputy assistant secretary. Barely two weeks weeks ago, Politico reported on Price's use of private planes. They said he traveled on private jets at least 24 times since May. And for most of those flights, other options were available, cheaper commercial options. The private flights reportedly cost taxpayers over $300,000. Politico reporters later found that Price used military planes during trips abroad and sometimes even brought his wife, costing taxpayers more than half a million dollars. Price agreed to pay back roughly $51,000, but it wasn't enough. Yesterday, when asked about Price's job, President Trump said he would make a decision later the night on whether or not he could keep it. Shortly afterwards, Price submitted a letter of resignation, writing, quote, in order for you to move forward without further disruption, I am officially tendering my resignation as the Secretary of Health and Human Services. The president, of course, accepted that resignation. Nation. Price's permanent replacement will need Senate confirmation. In a statement, Senator Chuck Schumer said the next secretary will need to follow the law when it comes to Obamacare and not, quote, sabotage it. So a little example of what we could see from Democrats down the road. Mm. Back to you guys. All right, Allison, thank Allison, you. Thank you. Allison. Not a fun week for Tom Price. No, not at all. Healthcare blew up in everyone's face yet again. And here we were talking about, as she was giving the report, if your whole thing is President Trump is draining the swamp and one of your secretaries is out spending hundreds of thousands, one report, over a million dollars on private planes, that doesn't look so good. And the subtext here is, you know, you didn't get repeal and replace passed either in the Senate. Right. And when you're in charge of that and you don't get it done, then the other stuff is even worse. Yeah. And exactly you never want saw. President Trump saying, we'll see. Yeah. <laughs> good guy. We'll That's a bad thing. It's not going to end well. Good, good guy. Words. We'll see. Yes. Uh, the president had more comments yesterday, though. He was asked outside the White House about a suite of issues uh, in a long ranging uh, interview, sort of impromptu before he went to Marine One. One of those questions was, of course, about the running uh, the, the tax reform plan, as well as what the ongoing conversation about the national anthem. Here's what the president had to say. We want every American to know the dignity of work, the pride, the pride, the beautiful pride getting a paycheck, 
the satisfaction of being told that was a job well done. We want every parent to be able to care for their children, and we want every child to know a home filled with love and a community filled with hope. That is the America we see when we look at our American flag that hangs in all of our factories, sails our oceans, and waves over our cities, towns, and fields. We love our American flag. The soul of a country is found in the people who make it a home. So the president doubling, uh, not doubling, uh, quintupling down right. again on his focus on the, an on the anthem and the flag. And this has, been a, this has been a winner for him and a loser for the sports teams and others that have tried to do this. Ratings are down for the NFL. And all he's saying is, we love our flag, we love our country, salute and stand for it. I love what he's just said there. He said, the soul of our country is found in the people who make it a home. You're right, he's on the right side of that argument, but also, I mean, ratings don't lie. And what's the one thing that if, you, if you're ahead of the NFL, you care about advertisers, you care about the people watching football. And I have a feeling they probably sat down with some of their players and said, guys, how much do we pay you every single year? Can you at least get it together to find another way to show unity? I mean, this is getting out of hand. Right. Or they get the blowback, like the Pittsburgh Steelers. You have Alejandro Villanueva out there by himself. Ben Roethlisberger regrets it. The whole team was it. They thought they were getting ahead of it. Turns out their fans are like, hey, guys, you play a game for a living. Get outside and stand up. I think fans, are, overall, get your politics out of my sport. That's right. what I want. I don't care what you think about tax right. reform or Obamacare or Planned Parenthood. If you dribble a ball or throw a pass or, or, or pitch for a living, I just want to watch you play. Adam Silver and the gang down the street here at NBA headquarters received the benefit of what the NFL went through. They were able to sort of preemptively get out in front of it. Adam Silver and the NBA said, here's the way this is going to go down. You're going to stand for the national anthem. So NBA preseason kicks off soon. The regular season doesn't begin until mid-October. Um, they get a little bit of the NFL's hindsight, and they get to realize, hey, we got to do it this way, otherwise we're going to lose what the NFL lost. Yeah, Absolutely. They're saying that. They're saying, obviously, no kneeling during the national anthem. This is what they're calling a rule, but at the same time, putting forward some ideas for unity, right? That Aaron Rodgers did, the, the quarterback, to show that they were locked arms. That's one way of showing we're all in this together. So I think a way they're combating that is, hey, we can still fight this, but in different ways. It's this sort of politically correct balance between the anthem and politics, which you saw. You saw the Dallas Cowboys try to do this. We're going to take a knee before and then stand for the anthem. The fans didn't like that either because, again, you're, you're walking a tightrope. And in the NBA, well, if you look farther into this statement, this is what uh, from the AP, what, what the Deputy Commissioner Mark Tatum had to say. He recommended an address by a player or a coach to fans before the anthem or a video featuring players or community leaders speaking out about important issues and showing photos from past community events. So hold on a second. So they're not going to take a knee for the anthem, but they're going to play some political social, social justice video on the monitor at these stadiums before the game? That's the last thing I want. I pay a bunch of money to take my boys to an NBA basketball game so I can be preached at by some guy who's a point guard? Forget about See, it. I, 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 don't, I don't want that. I, mean, I don't have a problem with that, actually. No, no, no. You don't have to have a problem with it, but fans still aren't going to like it. No. I mean, it's way better no. than kneeling for the You're anthem. You're right. If we were to take a poll and say, would you rather just watch football and yes. no politics, I think the majority of the country would be there. But, but we've come a long way from even last weekend to say, okay, well, we can show a video of players out in the community trying to make a difference, because that is what this is all about. If you really want to make a difference, kneeling during the national anthem is not the most productive way to do that. Go out in the community. Go mentor young kids on your right? own time on your own time but, yeah. but but what are you it's true but like so much of what you normally see at sports games are i went out and gave you know food to homeless families or read to kids all the sort of stuff that you want to see your players do i don't want to see political activism i went and donated to this candidate or went out and marched with black lives matter if that's what you want to do great you have every right to do so but do I want to see that on a screen during an NBA basketball game? It'll be very interesting to see how these teams thread this needle. There was a lot of concern about the NBA and where it'll go. You don't want whole teams kneeling. Uh, so I love it. Separate the anthem out. It shouldn't be about our American flag, and that's the point the president has made. But if, 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 if athletes are going to start to turn into Hollywood types, making oh, it all about politics, it's going to be a big problem. Let, let me ask you this, because you were out there on, on Sunday at the Jets-Dolphins game. Obviously, it was before the uh, uh, Bears-Packers game. Did you get the sense that people are, are just sick and tired of the sports combining with politics? I, I got that sense. 100%. They're just like, you know, look, do it on your own time. You're a paid employee. Uh, but that said, do it on your own time. I don't care if you do it. I just want to go watch a game. Absolutely. So what if you were a baseball fan, maybe a St. Louis Cardinals fan, and you decided, I'm going to go watch my Cardinals go play baseball. And then it, we're seeing into the NFL. 
We're seeing in the NBA, but not, not baseball. And then this is what you get in the stands at, at a St. Louis Cardinals game. Look at this. The video goes on for 30 minutes. 30 minutes at a Major League Baseball game. No, they're saying no justice, no baseball. Look, we've got the First Amendment in this country. They have every right to say what they want to say out there. That's what makes this country so wonderful. But I think this movement is dying. I think we've seen how the American people feel about this. Obviously, behind closed doors, you talked to President Trump about this last week, and he said that he feels some of the owners or the coaches are afraid of their own players. Well, and because if they push back, then they will appear to look racist right. as opposed to standing up for the national anthem, and they're afraid of that. You have every right in this country, but as a private stadium owned by a team, do you, you, they can kick these guys out, and eventually they were kicked out, for disrupting the, a fan experience, right? Stop killing us is what the banner said. Obviously, St. Louis, Ferguson, other, a lot of tensions there, but I don't, again, politics, why are they in my baseball? And there's a misconception out there that if you are not for kneeling during the, na the national anthem, that somehow you're not for equality, yeah. that you don't care Great about point. the rights for, for all different right. backgrounds in this country. That's what I hate about politics. Right. That, uh, that's where I think we, we get it and, so and wrong. And it's a great move by the liberal left to try to tie yeah. racism to conservative politics. They do a great job with it. Yeah. Well, send us what you think. We've been, we're still talking about this a week yeah. later. And I know all of you are in your home. So send us your thoughts. Friends at FoxNews.com. We want to hear what all of you think about this as well. We do have some other headlines, though. I want to bring you a police officer murdered in an ambush. 29-year-old detective Kristen Hearn shot and killed while responding to a suspicious vehicle call in Georgia. This man and a woman coming out of the woods approached Approaching the officers, the man opening fire, killing Detective Hearn and injuring the other officer, David Goodrich. Detective Hearn leaves behind a husband and a three-year-old son. That is so sad. And it is a race against time as victims in Puerto Rico are struggling to survive. 1,400 more National Guard troops are heading there this weekend, bringing the, bringing the total to 6,000. The ravaged island bracing for another one to three inches of rain after being battered by two hurricanes already. The 101st Airborne Division are trans transporting medical teams to key hospitals in need. President Trump says big decisions will have to be made rebuilding that island. Take a listen. We will have to really start all over again. We're literally starting from scratch. And of course, the president is expected to visit that island, Puerto Rico, on Tuesday. And O.J. Simpson wants to go to Florida once he gets out of prison, but Florida doesn't want him. The state attorney general sending a letter to the Florida Department of Corrections instructing them to tell Nevada authorities that Florida objects to Simpson serving his parole there. The state is where Simpson's financial team has been sending his assets. The juice was convicted of robbery and kidnapping in Nevada back in 2008. He could walk free as early as Monday. Can you believe that? Wow. O.J. Simpson yeah. back free again? Unreal. Such Story a part of history. All right, coming up, Ned Ryan on why the departure of Tom Price from the Trump administration could be a good thing for the swamp and the president of the United States. Plus, is the left trying to politicize the crisis in Puerto Rico by making it into President Trump's or trying to make it into President Trump's Katrina? Dan Bongino on that coming up. Welcome back. Well, Health and Human Services Secretary Tom Price offering his resignation amid widespread criticism over his private plane trips. So what does this mean for the swamp? Our next guest says that this is just the beginning. Here to weigh in, founder of American Majority and former presidential writer for President George W. Bush, Ned Ryan. Ned, thanks for joining hey, us Ned. this morning. So Absolutely. Your, Good morning, guys. Your take on this, on this secretary tendering his resignation and the president accepting it, is this is a good signal to the swamp. Oh, absolutely. I, I'm, I'm thrilled that this took place, that, you know, this administration is supposed to be different. A lot of administrations, this has happened in both Republican and Democrat administrations where there's been significant abuses of taxpayer dollars. And this is just the latest example. But this administration was meant to be different. And I'm so happy to see Trump move swiftly on this. And I would say, Pete and Abby, contrast this approach to Tom Price with Bob Menendez's trial up in New Jersey. We have a sitting Democrat U.S. Senator on trial for corruption, you've barely heard a peep from the mainstream media yeah. or the Democrats about him stepping down. But this really is kind of a microcosm of why the American people are sick of Washington, D.C. They despise it. Americans have lost trust in their institutions because they really have woken up to the fact that this system of government right now, what's happening in D.C., the working class has understood 
There's a ruling class of Republicans and Democrats and special interest cronies and corrupt consultants that has rigged the system in their favor and it's working against the American people. And 2016 in many ways was about them waking up and going enough is enough. And so when Trump responded, and I have to assume Tom Price was given you either resign or I'll fire you option. But the, the next step that Trump needs to take, guys, is this. Tom Price's behavior was merely a symptom of the swamp disease. How President Trump deals with the real root of the cause is to go do an executive order that is executive branch and cabinet members strong guidelines on how they use taxpayer dollars and government resources moving forward. He sets the tone for his administration, but he also sets the tone for future administrations that we're not going to tolerate this behavior anymore. Oh, this is not the first time this has happened, right? We have exactly. seen members of the administration taking advantage of things in the past. But uh, you mentioned the way President Trump handled this. And regardless of where you fall politically, I mean, he's someone that said, I'm coming in to drain the swamp. And immediately when he heard about this, you could see it in his face. I mean, he was really irate. He was upset. He's upset because it's taxpayer money. And he That's said, right. when I'm here in Washington, that is not what I'm here to do. I'm here to help people that need money back in their pockets. And, and contrast this as we're going into the tax reform debate. Mm -hmm. There are a lot of people, by the time you add up their federal, state, local food and gas taxes all combined, they're paying over 50% of their money in taxes to a government that then abuses their taxpayer dollars. And I, I actually wrote a, a, a opinion piece for Fox yesterday about this issue of Tom Price, but I made the point that if we continue down this path, we're going towards elective despotism. You know, it might be smiling statism, it might be velvet despotism, but it's despotism nonetheless because the American taxpayer is being abused, not only being abused by paying a massive amount in taxes, but then having over, uh, an overreach in government and then dictating to it many of life's choices. That's not what our founders mm -hmm. wanted and that's not what we wanted. And that's what really 2016 was about of saying, we don't want the status quo, we don't want business as usual. And so when Trump moved on this issue with Tom Price, I was thrilled to yeah. see that because again, that's what 2016 was about. He's not going to tolerate, and I hope that he does set those strong guidelines moving forward. Well, you've, uh, you've coined it velvet despotism, <laughs> Ned Ryan. Thank you very much. Appreciate it this morning. Thanks, guys. Can we get a definition for that? Yeah, I'm, I'm going to need it. <laughs> All right, up next, the librarian who mocked Melania Trump's Dr. Seuss book donation as racist propaganda is pictured wearing racist propaganda. No. Yes, that is a cat no. in the hat costume <laughs> hypocrisy. That is to a the tease max. for you. Welcome back to Fox and Friends. Some quick headlines for you this morning. President Trump's new travel ban is facing, of course, predictably, its first lawsuit. The ACLU challenging the new restrictions on people entering the U.S. from eight countries, saying that the order will seek to that they it will seek to amend an existing lawsuit in Maryland filed against the March 6th ban. The ACLU says the ban violates the Constitution and federal immigration law. See how that moves through the courts. And the Justice Department now charging 3,800 alleged gang members in the U.S. and Central America, including members of MS-13 and one of their leaders. The El Salvador-based gang has become a top priority for the Trump administration. Todd, down to you. Pete, thanks. Radio talk show host Rush Limbaugh sounding off against the left and its growing influence on the NFL. Take a listen. I do believe that the left wants to in, it cause great damage to the NFL. They don't like displays of patriotism, strength, rugged individualism. And that's why the players are being used. I don't want the NFL to get smaller. I don't want it to become insignificant. I don't want it to be taken over by a bunch of wusses. I don't want it to be taken over by left-wing social justice causes. So is he right? Is the left damaging professional football? Here to discuss Fox News contributor Richard Fowler and host for the blaze, Lawrence Jones. Gentlemen, great to see you here on a Thanks, Saturday uh, morning. Lawrence, I'll kick it here. off with you. Is Rush right? Well, he's right to a certain extent. I, I think the original protests, uh, a lot of people condemned the NFL, especially when you had Colin Kaepernick that depicted cops as pigs. But after the president's comments, it became about the president, and then they took him on. I think that they didn't expect the reaction. A lot of these NFL athletes don't know the politics of things, and they overplayed their hand a little bit. But I, I think he's right to a certain extent. Richard, what about you? Uh, one, I, I think Rush is wrong. And two, I think uh, to think that the left is not patriotic and don't have rugged individualism 
it is ridiculous. I, I'm very patriotic, and I find myself to be a rugged individual. Um, but beyond that, he, here's the thing. I, I, I think what, we, what you see from these players, what they did yesterday, last weekend, and rather, was brave. They said, listen, not only does this, this has nothing to do with Donald Trump, it has nothing to do with the anthem, it has nothing no, to do with our did. veterans. It has everything to do with standing up for racial injustice in this country. So why recent, weren't they kneeling before then, Richard? Then? Excuse me, I'm There were three players kneeling. So Excuse why me. weren't they? Uh, a recent poll from CNN found that 82% of African Americans think these players are doing absolutely the right thing. Right? And so that means the, uh, the entire community of people stand behind them saying there is racial injustice in this country and we've got to do something to fix it. And that means we've got to do something to fix it. When African Americans are saying to you in broad numbers, we see racial injustice against us, it's not just a small group of African Americans. 82 percent. But Richard, that's a, a different conversation. Majority. Let's let Lawrence weigh in. Let's let Lawrence. Richard, weigh in. that's a different conversation. I believe that the majority of America wants to have What's this different? tough, this tough conversation. But the way that the movement was phrased, especially when the leader of the movement depicted cops as pigs, how would black folks, uh, uh, people of color, uh, like if? Um, cops would wear a shirt that said, hey, all of us are thugs and criminals. And so when you have the leader that was problematic, that's why there was so much pushback. Again, Richard, three players, three or four players were the only ones kneeling before. This was against Donald Trump. This had nothing to do with the Colin Kaepernick movement. He was losing steam. I, I disagree fundamentally with that. No, it's that. a fact. Like, There's nothing to disagree with. No, it's a fact. Where, where, where are you getting these facts from? 200 players Watch kneeled last week. No, Excuse me. 200 that. players kneeled last week. They kneeled because they understood that this is a fight for racial injustice. No. And the facts back it up. You look Did at the, they all kneel the before President you Trump's look at comments? All the joint, you, you can look at all the Justice Department decrees against police departments across the country. So New why York, didn't they kneel before LA, President Trump? Miami, Atlanta. Let, let, and me, the let, list me, ask, goes on let me ask and Richard on. a quick question. Richard, I'm going to ask you a quick question. Does the left fundamentally not like the NFL? This is not about the left or right. You saw owners who gave millions of dollars to Donald Trump's inauguration say, we will stand up and fight injustice, including Jerry Jones, including the owner of the Patriots, including the owner of the Giants, said this is their racial injustice in this country, and we've got to fight back against it. Clearly, the president doesn't believe this. He thinks this is about the anthem. He thinks this is about the vets. And once again, Everybody is saying who is who is who understands these protests. This is not about the vets. This is not about the flag. All right. Well, we oh, believe <laughs> in the flag. We believe in the vets. We believe in the Constitution. Right, the Richard, First Amendment of the Constitution gives us the right nice to protest. Spin. I want to give Lawrence the last word quickly. Lawrence. Again, uh, the majority of Americans wants to have this conversation. I believe it's healthy. It's a healthy debate when we're talking about the community and the police and how we can come together. But again. Uh, Richard failed to realize the fact a lot of these players were not kneeling with Colin Kaepernick. They only did it in response to the president. It All was right. only four to five players. Lawrence, fact. if they believe every time African Americans we protest, go. the right not has opinion, a problem with it. Continue the no conversation it happens, by no emailing how we us. Do it. At friends at foxnews.com. I love when you two get together. Basically, I say go, and there's the whole segment for four minutes. Guys, thanks so much. All right. Mainstream media wasting no time using the crisis in Puerto Rico to attack the president. Do you have a a sense that the response from the federal government or maybe the response from uh, would have been stronger if you'd been a state. Maybe it's because they didn't care. So will anyone call them out for playing politics with tragedy? If I'm a betting man, I bet Dan Bongino will. He's live next. And while NFL players kneel for the national anthem, one high school is standing up for America's heroes under the Friday night lights. Their inspiring message is coming up next. Do you have a, a sense that the response from the federal government or maybe the response from uh, would have been stronger if you'd been a state? Maybe it's because they didn't care. Maybe it's because this wasn't a priority. There's three and a half million Americans in Puerto Rico, and the president was really preoccupied with um, trying to make a, 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 a racial issue out of the NFL um, while he wasn't doing anything about that. Well, there you see it. The so-called mainstream media wasting no time using the crisis in Puerto Rico to attack President Trump. And here to react this morning is Dan Bongino, former Secret Service agent, former NYPD officer and host of Renegade Republican, and the author of Protecting the President, a fantastic book. Dan, thanks for joining us this morning. So what's happening sure. in Puerto Rico, everyone recognizes is a tragedy, but they're trying to lay it at the doorstep of this president. 
You know, the media, and you wonder why Americans want to want to vomit every time they have to listen to left wing media coverage. I mean, this is pathetic. The Barack Obama response uh, to Hurricane Katrina was far from perfect. OK, and what happened after that? You had Chris Christie embrace him. Remember when he got off the plane? The media extolled the virtues of the Obama administration. I'm sorry, during Bush. Sandy, during Superstorm uh, Sandy. Okay. Uh, but the, the media loved him. The media thought he was great. Matter of fact, it, it, the Chris Christie hug may have gotten him reelected at one point. And now you have Donald Trump's response to Puerto Rico to this devastating storm, no question, a, a, a massive tragedy. And what are they doing? They, instead of trying to help, they're actually fabricating a story. The governor of Puerto Rico, Pete, has been completely clear on this, that the president has answered all his calls and they're doing everything they can. Hey, one more quick thing on this, too. The president actually has to say things that are obvious to make sure that the media gets the story. Like, hey, folks, Puerto Rico is an island. It's surrounded by water, like big water. That's the president <laughs> having to explain to the media, uh, right, what hey. an island is, because they don't seem to get that the logistics are different. It all makes sense. I mean, the way he worded it, it mm -hmm. makes total sense. You know, it's interesting. I've noticed whenever there is something positive to talk about when the president's on the ground, like we saw him in Houston, we saw him in Florida there, hugging people, embracing them, making them feel comforted, like the government's yeah. going to be there for whatever they need. You, you don't see those positive stories ever in the mainstream media. So yeah. where is that balance? I understand yeah. that the media's role, you've got to be critical at times, but you never see the other side. You never see the good times. Yeah, well, 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 Abby, the difference is the media's role to be critical is only to be critical of Republicans. Right. The media's role is not actually to be critical of, of people in general. You know, the, the media doing disaster analysis is comical. You know, the media can't even do journalism. And now they're supposed to criticize the logistics of a disaster response on a mass scale it's to an island where the entire infrastructure has been wiped out. And we're supposed to take their word for it, that they could do it better and the president is failing somehow. This is a total joke. And honestly, I, I don't think this resonates with a lot of people. I think people see this for what it is, naked partisanship in the media. And it, it, it's going to get brushed off by most Dan, serious people. As a Florida resident, I want to ask you about this political headline. We're going to bring up a full screen right now. Puerto Rican devastation could mean more Florida voters. And here's what they say in the article. As Puerto Rico slips deeper into what many call a humanitarian crisis following Hurricane Maria, the island is primed for a mass exodus of what could be one million people, a sizable number of whom are expected to settle in Florida, the nation's biggest swing state, that could well prove to be a boon to Democrats. What say you, Mr. Bongino? Well, you know, the author's not wrong in his premise, but this just sums up the entire leftist mindset. I mean, when your whole life revolves around government, everything to you is political strategy, not the lives of actual people, right? Uh, you know, remember the, the Life of Julia ads by Barack Obama, mm -hmm. where the, the Julia's entire life, the government helped her. This is it for the left. Everything for them is a strategic component to regain power. Even a devastating storm like this, where Democrats, I'm sure, and Democrat strategy firms are saying to themselves, forget about helping the people for a minute. Let's see how this could impact the right. swing state status of Florida. Right. I mean, yeah. it really is sad when you Let's think about it. Let's lose sight of what actually matters in all of this. That is so true. So I'm, right. I'm sure you followed this story as well. A librarian who mocked Melania's Dr. Seuss book donation as racist propaganda. Well, this woman, the librarian, is seen right here sad in face. a cat in the hat. Well, this is a photo of the there. cat in the hat costume. Which sometimes, Dan, I think you forget the things that you post on social media and the hypocrisy when yeah. you make a statement like that. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Here's a pro tip, okay? If you're going to go out there and make a big, almost international story about a library book and claim that Dr. Seuss is in fact racist, you may want to go back and scour your social media and make sure you are not celebrating said Dr. Yeah, Seuss. Yeah, she looks so happy prior there. Pictures. <laughs> and, and happy. She's got the hat. She's got the hat on. She, like she the hat. Green How eggs hard and is ham it to that miss morning. the hat? She cooked green eggs nicely done, Pete. It's true. It's not like she has like a Yankees cap where right. you could misinterpret. Was that the Mets? Was that the Yankees? <laughs> it's a Dr. Seuss hat. It's like seven feet tall. I mean, go and scour your social media. If you're going to be infected with Trump derangement syndrome, at least go back and make sure you're not going to be made yeah. a fool of because the social media army, I'm telling you, is going to go out and find you. Believe me, I've been on the receiving end of some of these mm -hmm. battering rams on social media. They're not pretty. Yeah. You better go back Don't and do your homework. Don't snuggle your 
out do in the not, hat. Dan, this is so <laughs> ridiculous that even the mainstream media, CNN's own Jake Tapper said this is ridiculous, but probably because, like Dr. Seuss, like Jake, we're all Dartmouth College alums. Dr. Seuss was actually in my fraternity, albeit at a different time. This story makes me enraged, Dan Bongino. I mean, this is this is a perfect example of when common sense is overridden by the anger by Trump. Trump threatens everything, everything liberalism and the swamp rats stand for. He is a threat to the entire structure we see now. And liberals are pulling out all the stops. And they're really, I hate to say it, they're losing their mind. This is, is beyond no liberal. This is beyond liberal. No, this is the classic liberal yeah, no, tactic. You've got to be racist. But this is evidence of the... Trump, the, nobody trolls liberals better than Donald Trump. Sure. I have this Trump theory out there. This is what he does. He engages in hyperbolic talk. It drives liberals crazy, and it forces them to show their butts to America. And this is what liberalism is, and this is why people are rejecting it in mass. And it's the genius of Donald Trump. He forces the liberal to show America what he or she, yeah. what they really are. Great and it, it's, it's not pretty. Oh, it's not pretty. Dan, great to have you Thanks, on. Loved Dan. meeting your family last week on Cooking with Friends. They are adorable. Oh, they, they, they are loved so it. My cute. daughter's still talking about you're it. You're surrounded Thank by you beautiful so women. We know why you're so happy, Dan. Uh, great to have you on. I married up. <laughs> <laughs> I agree. All right, turning now to some other headlines we're following. A rock climber is airlifted after falling in uh, uh, Yosemite Park, marking the third incident this week. Right now, it is still unclear how far the climber fell or what their current condition is. Friday's injury comes after two consecutive days of rock slides at the National Park in California. On Wednesday, one person died after a large rock fell. Then a second massive rock fall hit the park on Thursday. Also this, for the first time, the Trump administration is calling the mysterious health ailments in Cuba attacks. At least 21 diplomats at the American Embassy in Havana have been affected now, reporting symptoms of hearing loss, dizziness, and headaches. The State Department now pulling more for more than half of its diplomats from the country and sending Americans a travel warning. Still unclear who is behind those attacks. And while NFL players take a knee, this high school team is refusing to. Instead, they are showing their solidarity by walking hand in hand with officers at Masca 2 in the uh, Indians in Illinois, now helping more people follow in their footsteps. I feel like once that people see us do it, they're going to think, oh, well, maybe since they're doing it, we should do it too. We don't see anything but people. And I think that's the most important message that we've uh, been able to send powerful. The players say they just wanted to show their appreciation for those who protect us every single day. Stuff. we got to see more of that. That's great. Yep. That's Let's go to America. Let's go to Rick. Rick, no talking about hurricanes. At least I don't think we are. Uh, well, I am talking about tropics still, ah. unfortunately. So, yeah, you know what? And I bring this up. So this is where we have peak season. That was September 10th. We're, we're on the downside of that, which is good. That said, we're in a really active season, and the water across parts of the Caribbean are incredibly warm. So uh, we are still concerned that we'll see more tropical development sometime in the next few weeks. One system we're watching is right here around Puerto Rico. We're not, I don't think, going to see any development of this, but you see all of this cloud cover right here around Puerto Rico. Not good news. Throughout the weekend, we're going to be watching rain. This is kind of a future radar. Virgin Islands, by the way, getting more rain. Puerto Rico getting more rain. Some spots, uh, eventually, maybe about four to five inches of rain, especially across some of the higher terrain. Uh, and because of everything is so waterlogged here, that's obviously bad news. As, as they're trying to get out uh, any kind of a relief efforts, uh, bad news as well. Florida, also a system we're watching, potentially bringing a little bit of development. Mostly, I think we're going to see some pretty heavy rain across that area, especially in northern Florida, over the next couple of days. All right, guys. Back Thanks, Rick. Yeah, Appreciate it really feels like fall now. It does feel like fall right here. It certainly came in yeah. uh, rapidly yesterday. Yeah, yeah. Rick, thanks. All right, coming up, humanitarian efforts ramping up in Puerto Rico, including from our next guest, Kurt Schilling, going to be joining us live. Plus, the so-called mainstream media obsessing how the Russians influenced the election via Facebook and Twitter. But was it real news? Was it the real news that really hurt Hillary and the Democrats? Ali Beth Stuckey reacts.